Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope that you are doing great. I hope you had a great Monday. I had one. I have been studying today and uh, getting ready to do my presentation. So anyway, uh, that's what I have kind of <clears throat> set this week aside for. Last week was crazy. It didn't work out. So hopefully this week. Well, my camera is so weird on this new computer, but that's the only thing I don't like about it. And I know I can get me another one or I can get me a software to run it through that will give me more options. And maybe my hair won't look red or whatever. I don't know. Facebook is okay. It looks, my hair looks normal, but it does not look normal on uh, my computer. Anyway, okay. <laughs> I bet you didn't hop on here for that. Well, uh, today we're going to do Psalm 5. And um, Romans 12. I don't know. I'm just going where the Holy Spirit leads me. And it seems like they link together, you know. And uh, we're just going to go with it. We're just going to go with it. I have my computer kind of sitting up, and I don't know whether I want to do it like this or not. I'm going to go ahead and do it tonight, and then we'll see tomorrow whether, we'll see. I might change it tomorrow. But I had it sitting up so I could do what I was trying to learn today. All right, well, let's jump into prayer. And... Uh, so many things to pray for. So many things. But let's be thankful that we have a Savior that's overcome everything. And we have a God that is sovereign over all and He is on His throne. And we have the Holy Spirit to help us get through every day to guide us and uh, we are blessed we are so blessed so let's jump into some prayer god we just come to you and we are so thankful that you are on your throne and you are in control and there is absolutely nothing in this world that you do not see that you do not know you are from everlasting to everlasting, and you have always been, and you will always be. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I Am. Thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. Thank you for being our shelter in the storm, and our strength and our refuge. Thank you, God, for that you are mighty and magnificent and powerful. You are the righteous judge. You are loving and kind and compassionate and caring, God. And you are patient. You want none to perish, God. You want all to come to the saving grace of Jesus. And you want all to, to be with you eternally. But God, you also give us free will to choose. So thank you for that. Thank you, God, for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. I didn't see what time I got started. I think I got started a little bit late. Oh, maybe about five minutes. Well, I just got through eating dinner. Not a good excuse, but it is what it is. Okay. Well, I did not finish my prayer, but I'll finish it later. We will do a longer prayer later, okay? All right, well, let's delve into Psalms 5. Actually, Psalm 5. Okay, I'm really enjoying this study with you on Psalms. It is so good. This one's kind of long as far as Psalms go. Who 
too. I like this, the names of God. I didn't know this was in my study Bible. I actually did the names of God one time, and I had to do all the research on uh, Google. I didn't know it was in my study Bible. Oh, well. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry. My King and my God, for to you I will pray. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you, and I will look up. So, this again is the Psalm of David. It says, A prayer for guidance to the chief musician with flutes, a Psalm of David. So it sounds like David is asking for direction, asking for guidance from God. Give heed to the voice of my cry. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you and I will look up. So again, David trusts God. David trusts God with all that he has. We need to trust God, too, with all that we have, not forsaking anything, but just laying it all down for God. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. You shall destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the thirsty and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. In fear of you, I will worship toward your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. So again, guidance. David is asking for guidance from God. He is saying that wickedness will not dwell with God. Evil will not dwell with him. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. You shall destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful men. Again, unrighteousness. God will not stand with unrighteousness. He is holy. He's a holy God. But again, he comes to the house of God and he asks for direction. He asks for guidance to help him. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. He's talking about the wicked again. I'm sorry, my nose itches. There is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is destruction. Their throat is an open tomb. They flatter with their tongue. Pronounce them guilty, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. So again, he's talking about the unrighteousness. But again, he is asking, he is trusting that God will give him the guidance that he needs, that he will direct his path, that he will make his way straight. So, but let all of those rejoice who put their trust in you. So when we put our trust in God, we can rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you will surround him as with a shield. That is so good. Let me see if there's a study part to this. Yes, there is. If I can get on the right page. Hello to anyone who is coming for the first time. Um, welcome. Welcome to my ministry channel called Awesome Treasures. Okay, so this is the study part. 
Mercy describes God's steadfast love and his covenant loyalty. Experiencing God's mercy Unfailing love is a primary benefit of faith in him. This reference to God's covenant love is often translated loving kindness. God's love must be set in the context of his covenant to emphasize the constancy and fidelity of his love for his people. Through his loving kindness, God promises forgiveness, compassion, and blessings. His benefits are guaranteed to be unceasing. Such faith leads the believer to fear the Lord in reverent obedience. Joy, protection, and blessing surround those who put their faith in the Lord. The large shield was designed to protect the entire body. Okay. So again, he's talking about protection. That God will protect us. And that is, that concludes Psalm 5. I got really hot, so I kind of have two, well, I thought I had two fans going. That one, I guess, got turned off. I'm going to turn it down. I have two fans going. I have one behind me and one in front of me. So let's go to Romans 12. Find Romans 12. I don't have it marked. I guess I ought to mark these and it would be a little bit faster. These pages are so thin, they're really hard to turn. But I love this Bible because it has so many great things in it. Okay, so let's, lead, let's read Romans 12. And it is a little bit long, but I really liked what I read on it in it this morning. And I thought we would read all of it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, in the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Serve God with spiritual gifts. That's the little heading. Serve God with spiritual gifts. I don't know why I said it like that. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry. Let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Behave like a Christian. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Again, we are to abstain from evil. Just like we were talking about in Psalms. He was talking about the unrighteous. And, and um, how he trusts God. How he wants God to give him guidance. Okay. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another. With brotherly love and honor giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, 
rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not, do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You know, we are to treat everyone, everyone, right. And if Whoever they are, if someone needs something, we need to be the ones that will give it to them. Whether they've been mean to us or not, it doesn't matter. Through the love of Jesus, we are to be his hands and feet. And sometimes that means doing that. Sometimes it means doing something for someone that has hurt you. We are to forgive and we are to move on and not live in the past and not live in the failures of the past and not live in the in the hurts of the past, but to live in today, in the present. We are to live in today and let God take care of tomorrow. We are to embrace today and we are to live as those living sacrifices for Jesus. Because he sacrificed himself for us. All right. Well, how do we want to do the salvation message tonight? I don't know. My friend Josie hasn't made it yet. Uh, we already did that one the other day. kind of need some new ones. Let's do this one. Well, I can't. It's falling out. Let's do this one. Jesus is the answer. He is the answer. This is. Who did this? Discipleship, student discipleship ministries did this. This is really good. We used to go to YEC and we used to go and many great Christian singers and musicians, but I don't know whether they had YEC this year or not, because we took our kids to camp. Okay, so look at this cross. Can you see the whole thing? I'll pull it back so you can see it. It's really colorful. I really like it. And then it has some things on the back. All right, well, I am going to start with one. Maybe it's supposed to be like this. Probably supposed to be like this. Okay. So we're going to start with one and two. And we're going to have the answer, which is Jesus in, in between. So one and two. One, God loves you and has a great plan for you. He created you for a purpose to have a personal relationship with him. Genesis 1.27 He wants you to experience a full and abundant life right here on earth. Jesus said, My purpose is to give life in all its fullness. John 10.10 10. Because of sin in your life, you are separated from God. We all are. When we are living in sin, it is a separation from God because God is holy. And God cannot look on our sin. And God is not going to accept our sin. It's okay. Because, hey, 
I love these people and it's okay. He does not. He hates sin. He loves the sinner, but he hates sin. We are all sinners, Romans 3.23. The price for sin is death, Romans 6.23. Eternal separation from God. Your sins have cut you off from God. Okay, I gotta find three. It's really hard sometimes. I don't know where three is. Oh, there it is. Okay. Sorry about that. Three is in the middle. We've got God over here. We've got sin that separates us. And then we've got man. Sin separates man from God, but there is hope. Okay. The price is already paid. By Jesus. See Jesus in the middle there? That's four. The price is already paid. God showed his, his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us when we were still sinners. Romans 5, 8. So let me find five. It's free. It's free. Eternal salvation is a free gift. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. You can't be saved by good works, Bible knowledge, morality, or religion. You can't earn your way to heaven. There is only one way. I've got the psalmist. Jesus, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. The only answer. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. Seven is, it's up to you. You must decide for yourself if you are willing to turn from your sins and ask Jesus into your heart. Romans 10, 9 and John 1, 12. So, is there an 8? No. Not. I don't think I did this quite right. I think I need practice. Receive Christ, reject Christ. Not to decide is to decide. So this is the prayer. And uh, I'm going to leave some space where you can repeat after me. And, and if you would like to get saved, it is your choice. Jesus, I ask you into my heart to be my Savior and Lord. Forgive my sins and give me the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, there is an eight. Once you ask Jesus into your life, you can know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5, 11 through 12. John 10, 28 through 29. It is important that you, number one, be baptized and get involved in a local church. Two, get help from an old believer. 
Three, spend time in prayer and Bible reading. And four, share with others what Jesus has done for you. And Jesus is the answer. And I don't think I did this right because I think I was supposed to start here <laughs> with all this. Whatever your struggle, loneliness, guilt, suicide, sex, stress, life after death, purpose in life, AIDS, abortion, drugs, there is an answer. Uh, where does it go from there? I don't know. I will figure this out. And next time, I promise I will be better at it. And I will just keep getting better and better. Uh, maybe not. I know this is supposed to be on the outside. Oh, there we are. Jesus is the answer. I think this is all the instructions to tell me how to do it. But anyway, so if you did invite Jesus into your heart, even though this is a bumbled thing that I just got through doing, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And... Um, you are now, and the angels are rejoicing. You are, you are now saved, sealed, and sanctified through, by God, through Jesus, His Son. And so, like it said, um, find you a church, do Bible reading every day, read God's Word every day, um, do prayer every day. And uh, follow Jesus and follow truth. Listen to the Holy Spirit and follow truth. Hey, my friend Josie, how are you? I was, I was winding it up, but you're here in time for prayer. I, uh, we read Psalms 5 tonight. It didn't take very long in Romans 12. So, but I've got to get off of here and get Seth something to eat. But I did a really short prayer at the beginning. Um, I'm going to do a longer prayer now. Do our blessing from God in numbers. And then we'll pray. Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. My day was fine. How was yours? Are you feeling better? Are you feeling stronger? Good. Praise the Lord that you're feeling better. That is awesome. I mostly studied today and did laundry. I got I have to go put up laundry in a little bit. Okay, well, do you have any prayer requests? We can do a praise on you feeling better. My daughter is feeling better also. Excuse me. I had to burp. Just got through eating dinner a while ago. All right, well, let's jump into some prayer and I'll I'll pray for everyone. I pretty much know who to pray for. Um I don't know whether I ended my prayer a while ago on my thought process went somewhere else. So maybe I can do better this time. 
God, we just praise you and thank you for all that you are and for all that you do. God, we just thank you for your word, that it encourages us to trust you and to not go down the path of unrighteousness, but to stay on the path with Jesus, to keep following Jesus and to um, abstain from sin when we can to ask for forgiveness when we stumble in because sometimes we do and we just pray God for the lost we just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved and we pray for the prodigals too to return to you God to repent of their sins to uh, have their relationship reconciled with you just to have it made new. We pray for a Jesus movement that cannot be stopped. All the, all the concerts, all the everything that's going on right now, we just pray that they are sharing the gospel everywhere they go. We know that uh, the Jesus people are, and we know that uh, Let Us Worship is, and there are other movements too, God, that are just going to different cities and preaching your truths in the gospel of Jesus, God, we just pray that they would be successful, that you would keep them safe as they do your work, God. We also pray for all the disasters that are going on, the, the hurricane that hit. God, we just pray for these people. We just pray that you would meet their needs. You would send people that would be the hands and feet of Jesus and the loving compassion of Jesus to help them. God, we just praise you that Josie is feeling better and we praise you that Brittany is feeling better and we just pray, God, for continued, continued healing and restorative healing, God, to, uh, that they would feel as good as they did before. We pray for Mike. We pray the same for him. We pray for the boys that they would be protected from this disease. And we pray for Austin, God. We just pray that you would give him your guidance and wisdom. And we just pray that you would be with him, God, that he would spend some time with his mom studying your word, God. It's so important. It's uh, really more important than learning stuff in school is learning what you want us to do, God, in our lives. And we just pray for Josie's sisters and her brothers and their families, God. And we pray for um, her children and their families. We just pray for protection and provision and blessings. We pray the same for Josie and Austin, God, for provision and protection and blessings. We just pray for strength for Josie. And we pray that you would help her to get rid of this cough. That seems to be the thing that hangs on the longest, God, is the cough. We pray for eradication of this disease, God. We pray for you to miraculously just remove it from this world. We know that you have the power. We know that you can do it, God. We don't know whether it's your plan and purpose, and we trust you with everything that we have, God. And we trust your plans and your purposes and your perfect timing. And uh, I pray for protection and provision and blessings for my family too, God, for my, my children and their children, God, the same for them, that you would guide and direct them every day and that they would seek your face every day through your word, through prayer, and through praise. When we pray for school, God. We just pray that this is a good school year for Walnut Springs and for Morgan, for Whitney, for Glen Rose, for all of our kids and our youth that go to so many different schools, God. We just pray that you would be with them and that you would just bless them with a good school year and that they would have freedom, God. They wouldn't have to be wearing masks in school. But they could just be free to be themselves and to learn the way that you intended them to. God, we just... Uh, I think that I prayed about everything I need to pray about. I pray for Josie's friend Maria. For some reason, she popped into my head, God. I pray for blessings and protection and provision for her, God. 
that you would give her strength as she's having to um, take on more of a workload right now, God, that you would protect her from this disease. And for all the other workers, God, in Meridian too, we pray for blessings in Meridian School also. And all the other surrounding schools, God, we just pray the same for them. We just pray all throughout Texas, God, for blessings in our schools. In these other states, God, we pray that parents will stand up for truth and what is right. We pray for all these missing children, God, that just come up missing. And then we find out months later, God, that they really weren't missing. So we pray for truth, God. We pray for truth to rise above all lies. We pray for all these missing children to be worth truth told about them instead of instead of some cover story to cover up what was really done. Sometimes it was an accident, and sometimes we just really don't understand why, why the cover-up story. Why not get help? But God, we're not in that situation. And God, we do pray in those situations. We pray for these kids, God. We pray for them to have justice where needed. You are the righteous judge, and we are not the judge, God. You know all hearts and minds, and we praise you for that, and we thank you for that. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. I think I did. I did pray for you for continued healing and strength and to get rid of your cough, because that seems to be what's left for everybody. That's like the last thing to leave is the the cough that hangs on. Do you know what is really weird, Josie? Is that I have had in the past, not lately, because I've been really trying to stay up on my allergy medicine, but in the past, I have had allergy infections that have these same symptoms, that have the cough, that have the the mucus that's so itchy that you can't keep from coughing, that um, the runny nose, the blowing of the nose, and the bladder infection. I've had bladder infection with it before, so I wonder, I wonder if this isn't just like what we've had around for a really long time. You know, I've had fever with it. I've had body aches with it. I've had, I. A sinus infection, yeah, probably. It's probably what that was, was a sinus infection. And the same as with COVID, I would wake up in the morning, I'd feel pretty good, but by night I would just be wiped out and just be so tired and so exhausted. I could barely put one foot in front of the other. And so I just, I don't know. I'm skeptical. But I can't say I can't say much more than that on these two platforms. So I just that just popped into my head that I've had something I call it the allergy crud is what I call it. And it's similar. It is similar. I don't think I want this Delta variant though. I think it might be worse than what we had. I think it might have more symptoms with it. But anyway, I just thought of that, and I don't, I don't like that allergy crud either because it is like you have that cough. It's like a, it's like it becomes your best friend. <laughs> oh, is Monica there? Hi, Monica. I don't see Monica. I don't see your picture. <laughs> anyway, it becomes like your best friend. And so you're getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning because you can't sleep, you can't lay down, so you're having to sit up so you won't cough. becomes your best friend, and then all of a sudden it's just you wake up one morning and it's gone. So I hope that for your cough. I hope that you wake up one morning and it's just gone because I know it's probably your best friend that keeps you up at night. And uh, anyway, well, I said hi to her. I don't know. Her picture didn't pop up like yours, so I don't know. 
Uh, I only know your picture. Some people's pictures pop up, but I don't know who they are. Okay, well, I'm going to get off of here because I need to go feed Seth, and I'm trying to keep the time limit down. I have a have a gift of gab. So have an awesome rest of your night, Josie and Monica, if you're there, and anybody else who comes to watch this. And have an awesome tomorrow, which is Tuesday. And much love. Might get good at this one of these days. Much love and cyber hugs. Till I see you again. Good night.